Day 15 of the 1605 Content Festival. It's that time of the day again for a webinar this month. Uh, welcome, I'm Jan de Kater from Voice Booking. 1605, it's a new festival. While we were in lockdown, we thought, hey, let's do something inspiring. And here we are with 21 webinars in a row. Before we start, I'm the founder of Voice Booking. I'm a voice actor myself, and uh, sometimes you will hear me stutter. So it's if the webinar takes a bit long, um, um, Sorry, it's just me. This week at 16.05, uh, Nano Nengo. We have her in the studio uh, next Friday and she's going to do a webinar about uh, voicing audiobooks. Uh, our very own Gijs Friese will be here next Wednesday. He will tell you all about the inside secrets of the audio design craft. Next Monday, that's something special. If you, if you are not a native English person and sometimes you have to uh, 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 do things in in the English language and you think, ooh, that's a bit, bit, bit um, how should I say it? You, I'm not native. Well, if you think that, <laughs> um, I would say uh, take a big red marker and write down next Monday in your agenda, Buffy Duberman with How to Rock Your English. Buffy is an English language coach. She's really inspiring and she's one of the best in the field. So go check it out at voicebooking.com slash en slash webinar. Today's webinar, it's about, yeah, what's it about? Um, in a way, it's about ego because it's a strange business we are in. Uh, you can have a, the most beautiful voice in the world. You can work hard, practice hard, and still you don't see the voice jobs coming in in huge amounts. And why is that? Yeah, it's a bit because of ego, or better put, a voice needs a character, a real good character. So how to create that? especially when needed for animation. That's why I asked my friend Stéphane Conicar. Uh, he's going to talk about it today, and he's a French voice actor and neutral English, and he's uh, based in London. If you have any questions during the session, just ask me uh, via the Zoom question and answer. Then uh, um, afterwards, I will um, um, ask all your questions to Stéphane. Day number 15 of the 1605 Content Festival. It's webinar number 15. Here's Stefan Konikar with Character Building for Animation. Enjoy. Stefan, you have to unmute your microphone, I think. We can't hear you. I think Stefan is checking it out right now. Uh, in the left. Hello. Yeah, yeah. There you are. Hello. Uh, Sorry about this. Um, and uh, can you uh, enable my screen sharing? Did it. You already did. It. Okay. So you can see this. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, and uh, without any further ado, this is what I do, and this is what I've done for. A few years. I've been a voice actor and um, specialist in animation and uh, gaming for mm, probably the past 35 years. Um, I've been very lucky in the sense that I've worked on some massive, massive projects. And, um, and basically, I've got a half an hour to tell you how to do it. So let's uh, get cracking. In the meantime, I want to show you what a, uh, a gaming demo looks like nowadays and here we go a forest and snow they said russia could never be tamed 
now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. My name is Tug, and I'm at your service, Inquisitor. My investigation uncovered clues, but no proof. Then, not long after, every warden in Orlais began to hear the calling. Meet me there, and we will find answers. Goodbye, and stay safe. You know I'm a petty thief. Well, perhaps I'll go on the prowl. I might as well fetch some weapons or treasure for you. You are on the next flight back to Miami. Internal affairs are coming down on you, and I'm not going to stop them. You walk out of here and you've crossed the line. I want him stopped. I saw him go into the dungeons. He may still be there. And from the rumors flying through Denerim, removing him from the throne is already your plan. No? Speak clearly. I, Gavlan. Gavlan wants soul. Many, many soul. <laughs> <laughs> I am a heartless nobleman. Have you not heard? Perhaps we can enjoy a rather more intimate dance later. Okay, and uh, let me stop this before, yeah, cancel before it starts going further. Okay, so, um, the uh, basically I'm going to take you to an A to Z of the process of creating character voices. One of the main thing to know is that more often than not, the character is created at the moment of the audition. And what you get is you get what we call um, sides. Now on the sides, you will have information about the character. Now the um, the way the sides work is basically often you've got a, um, a picture, you've got a description of the uh, game or the animation, then you will have a brief on the storyline itself, and then you will have the character description. Um, and finally, you will have a set of several sentences which they want you to audition for. Now, gaming and auditions are an interesting um, part of VO because from the audition they will cast you and more often than not, it is then that the character is created. That's why it's important to spend a lot of time as an actor and as a voice actor on the sides. So my first tip, um, and I hope you're all poised with a, uh, a pen and pencil. My first tip is do not just rely on your memory, but write down everything that is on the side. The reason you want to do this is that as a casting director, I get a, an incredible amount of auditions that simply miss the brief. They are just not on target to the brief. And if I've got to choose between 10 people who are equally good for the same character, I will choose the people who actually have bothered to read the brief. And I will not sort of try to, I won't have time to actually decide, oh, this person was good in their audition um, because we are competing in an incredibly competitive market. So, Therefore, it's absolutely important to get the brief. So, when you get a brief, 
get a piece of paper and let me show you well before I, I, I show you a side. So you get a piece of paper and you go through the storyline. What what is relevant to the character you're going to create? Then you go through your character description and write down all the adjectives and adverbs that speak about your character. The second thing you do is to look at the face or the image of your character. Let's say, for example, we're doing animation and the character has a sort of, uh, you know, a jaw that is slightly like this. And then their eyes are, are like this, right? Well, this will actually influence the way I speak and the way I, I create a character. Now, let's imagine I've got another character whose chin is completely inwards and he's completely like crunched up here and, and like really, really tight there with a the mouth going down like this. Well, this will also influence the voice. So the idea is just from the image, just from that um, bit of information that is the physical bit of, an, uh, of information, you want to start getting a voice through. Now, when you have looked at the side and the picture, what you want to be able to do is to do what I call the star exercise. And now the star exercise is all based on keeping the physicality of your character through the various stages of emotions that your character can have. I explain. Let's say my character is, no, which one? Which one would you rather have? Oh, let's go for this one. Right, so I've got one which is here, and he's quite cantankerous, and he's quite... Now, I will be asked, as part of my, um, of my audition and my sides, they will give me four or five different lines. Why? Because you've got to put yourself in the position of the casting director. Now, the casting director, he's trying to see whether you can sustain happiness on the one hand and fear on the other and anger on the one hand and uh, perhaps sadness um, on another but remaining in the character so before you actually jump into the booth and sort of send off an audition spend the time having worked on the physicality of your character and remember my character is here so I'm, I'm, this is my, my character. Now, I want to make sure that I can sustain him in various places. So I want to be able to sustain him in, in fear. Oh, oh my God, no. Oh, so, so I want to be able to feel that emotion. And then I go back into what we call the mask in neutral, which is the neutral mask of my character. So this, this is here. So I go back to this. And then I want to be able to also have um, joy. That's why it's called the star, because you go in always from the uh, basic mask in neutral of your character up into the fear and then back down into mask in neutral and then going towards, let's say, happiness. Oh, <laughs> such, such a joy. Such, see how suddenly, but then I come back to my mask in neutral. And then after that, I've got a terrible sadness and. Uh, um, and, and um, one thing that I have to stress is that the big difference between realistic acting and character acting is not on the veracity or the truthfulness of your emotion. It is on how big that emotion is. So you as a character are not just putting on an emotion. You must feel that emotion. So we continue with that sort of star system. So now we've done, uh, um, we've done the sadness of my character. We've done the, the happiness of my character. We've done the, the fear of my character. And and um, uh, the last one, uh, what are the fear, happiness, um, sadness, and. And that's, that's about it. I mean, unless you want to sort of go into sort of um, um, uh, other um, uh, emotions, like, for example, the love, the love of the character, that could be, oh, and then you want to go, um, how would your character be surprised? So how would you, oh, so, but always 
with that character in mind and always coming back to the mask in neutral. Now, once you've done that, do not rush once again to go into a booth immediately. Um, have a look at the various sentences that you've been given. Now, if the side is actually very, very good and well-written side, what they will give you is the, the emotion, um, the projection level, um, the um, situation of your character for each side. But why do they give you several different sides? There's several different phrases. It's because every time they want to be able to see what you will do in that situation and in that character. So you will have, for example, um, uh, a threat, a, um, uh, a piece where you're worried, a piece where you get hit, etc. So try, when you look at that side, to actually analyze where and what the casting director really wants to hear. So when you get into the booth and you've sort of created that character, and once again, I mean, it is, I mean, character creation is massive. It's, it's, it can come from anywhere. Some of you will be trained actors, in which case you know already how to create characters. Um, some of you will have come to voiceover from other areas. Um, but you will always need, as a voice actor, to be able to create character. Even if you do um, um, any kind of uh, work, such as, for example, e-learning, the person who does the e-learning is not you, or it shouldn't be you. It should be you in the skin of someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, which more often than not, when we do e-learning, we have no idea what it is exactly that we're talking about. We're not experts in the field. We are jumping into the skin and into the persona of someone who knows what they're talking about. Let's say we do, for example, a, uh, a medical e-learning, um, talking about how to do heart transplants. Well, we're not heart surgeons, but yet we've got to have the definite authority to pretend to be a heart surgeon, or at least to know what we're talking about. My big advice is do not rush into the booth to record your sides. What I tend to do is I do something that I call the peripatetitum. The peripatetitum is basically um, a walking exercise. I know it takes me roughly about 15 to 20 minutes to walk around my local park. And when I start the walk, I'm me. I'm just me, Stefan, walking my dog. The further I go into the park, the more I will start to take the physicality of the character, um, take the uh, sort of mimic the synapses of the character. Um, start to have an idea of where he is, um, what he's done before, what he's trying to achieve through what he says. Um, and once again, there's, I, I've got a, a method which I call the pick and mix. Um, there are several acting methods out there, from Stanislavski to Grotowski to Meisner to... And in fact, they are not mutually... Um, exclusive. It doesn't mean that because you prefer or you work with Stanislavski that you can't bring a little of Meisner in it or a little bit of um, Grotowski in it. On the contrary, basically you can go into character either from within, trying to explore the feelings of the character and trying to repro uh, um, reproduce them, but you can also go into character from without. Um, I mean, some people um, actually get into character once they get their costume, when you're talking about theatre actors. Um, some people will actually work from the outside in, so using the physicality in order to be able to achieve the essence of their character. The same goes about 
analyzing the purpose of your character and what he stands for. So you can have um, a um, socio-economic read of your character. Where is he in the um, in the power scheme? Um, is he at the bottom? Is he earning uh, a basic wage? Uh, or is he high up? You can also have a, a psychological uh, entrance to your character. What happened in his childhood to make this particular uh, character bad or good? Now, uh, before I carry on, what I want to be able to do, and if my screen will let me is to actually show you uh, a side so if you bear with me I will get one side open and okay 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 I'm opening it now. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. This is confidential material, so not to be shared, obviously, even though the casting is finished, but I still would rather you wouldn't share it with anyone. Um, and here, let me share my screen so that you see what I mean about what a side looks like. So, the character, nasty. So already, right from the, from the start, just from the name of the character, we can get some idea of what she's like. So she's a bit of a, you know, if we look at just the expression to start with, um, scantily dressed, um, obviously a lot of confidence in herself, and yet she's wearing stuff that is quite um, uh, handy to uh, to be physical in, yeah? Now, genre, it's always important to realize the genre of the game or the uh, animation that you're going for because that will give you the level of acting. Now, you know that if it's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy mashup, it's likely to be in the epic genre. So everything is slightly heightened reality. It's not, it's not a kitchen sink drama where everything is hyper-realistic. It will be uh, slightly up from that, but it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be cartoony, let's put it this way. Then after that, it gives you the gameplay, so third person action RPG, um, the setting. It will give you what happened before, what it, it gives you the setting for your character to work in. And then, it gives you a character description. Once again, when you get the sides, write everything down. The fact that you actually write it down means that you're far more likely to take it in and to register it so that when it comes to actually recording something, you're not going to give me, for example, a Spanish accent when in fact it states very clearly that it has to be neutral American. Yeah? Voice. Confident, alto, lowbrow, glib, takes no guff, sees through your bullshit. So we've got a character there that who we know is quite in your face. You know, she is quite, um, she's very confident. She, she knows what she wants. Uh, female, early 30s. Now, this, these are the actual sides. So, what do we get from that? So, it doesn't tell us exactly what they want to hear, but from the script itself, and this is where you, do, you need to do a sort of linguistic analysis of the script, um, you should be able to determine from each side what exactly the director is willing to hear. So, yeah, sounds like Logan, so what? <laughs> and before you ask, I haven't had shit to do with him in years. So this is a confidential conf conversation. You want to rip him and you ask all the three? Well, go right ahead. So she's, um, yeah, yeah, I don't care. So this, if you were to put, uh, oh yeah, and a, another good thing. Um, if you haven't got this, 
Uh, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this. So anyway, enough of this stop share. This is a book that I would actually recommend when you're doing, well, there's two books that I would recommend when you're doing um, character work. One of them is called Actioning and How to Do It. The other one is called Actions and Actors Thesaurus. Actioning is basically putting an action on a uh, piece of script. And basically what it allows you is to be extremely precise with what you want. I talk to casting directors all the time. I work with casting directors all the time. And you know what the main thing they say all the time is that actors are not making choices. And they're basically trying to go for the most common denominator. So they're trying to give you what they think everybody well, the, the casting director wants to hear. When in fact, if a casting director is working on one character, he will probably have for each character that he's casting, um, probably about 30 people um, that he selects. So imagine having to listen 30 times for the same script. So what you want to do is to be memorable, for the right reasons, write it down. I want to be memorable for the right reasons. I, I want to have made choices that are definite. I want to use emotes. Um, and by emotes, I mean um, fill the character. Give him a breath. Don't de breath your characters. Give him mm, an ahs oh, and <laughs> that kind of thing. Because the more you give emotes to your character, the more alive the character will be. Judge the proximity to the mic and give them and make sure that you give them an array from the very close to my very confidential conversation that you may have to something that is far more projected and something that will allow them to hear you when you project to a big crowd. So you want to really hit all the marks, but make choices. That's the most important thing. Now, um, I want to give you enough time to actually um, give me some, uh, uh, to, give, to, to do some questions and it's already half past, a little bit more than half past. Um, please join me on my fa fa Facebook page. I have a Facebook page called Voice Hyphen Over Training on Facebook, on which there's a lot of free advice, free classes, some of them are paying, a lot of uh, coaches are there. Um, and if you're serious about going into animation and gaming, and if you haven't done much uh, voiceover work before in that area, I would advise you to get some training in that before you go there. But join me on the voice hyphen over training uh, Facebook and, uh, and I'm happy to answer questions. Great, Stefan. Thank you very much. That's very inspiring. Um, uh, where did you start as a voice actor? Here or just 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 with uh, um, um, e-learning, radio ads? Well, I, I I started as an actor. So I was um, I, I started acting professionally when I was 14. And then I was very, very lucky to, well, I was imitating my grandmother, um, <laughs> as one does, on a bus to make all my friends laugh because I discovered quite quickly that it was very safe to be the clown of the class. Um, and once you're the clown and you make everybody laugh, nobody wants to hit you. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, that's a good way of hiding in the uh, multitude. And uh, so I was imitating my grandmother, who was very, very like this and uh, very... Uh, and uh, I was lucky enough that an agent was sitting behind. In the bus. In the bus. And he was actually casting for a, an old woman character. And he hadn't found what he wanted. And this was for a literary magazine. And basically I had to read five pages of a, of a book. And... Um, and that was the beginning of my um, of my career as a voice actor, and, right. uh, and I never stopped. Um, and that was hmm, a long time ago. A long time ago. So, so uh, you started doing this 
for the French French market? Absolutely. Yeah. First, well, I was I was brought up bilingual French and German, okay. um, and because uh, my parents had a, a hotel, and I I seemed to be able to pick up languages um, mm -hmm. like a sponge. So um, I was basically fluent in French and German by the age of about 15, 14, 15. Yep. And um, so I started uh, doing acting and voice acting in, uh, in French mainly. But then I was lucky enough to win a scholarship to the US to study the subject of my choice in the university of my choice. And um, there was four of us in France every year to be selected to, um, to go. And, um, and I didn't speak a word of English because uh, Spanish was my third language. So I went to the US, I landed in Texas and uh, stayed there for two months to learn English. And then um, eventually went to a performing arts college and um, continued uh, working in English. Uh, so I still, I'd say my work is about 20% in French, about 70% in English and 10% in the other five languages that I've learned since then. Okay, so uh, you, uh, you do Rumble and, uh, and uh, sorry, I actually lost twice, guys. Twice, guys. Um, okay, so, so, so you, 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 when did, did you London? Oh, um, I moved to London. Uh, I think it was uh, eighty nine, so yeah, yeah. some 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 years ago. And at first, I, I you know what they say. Basically, you want as an actor, as a voice actor, you want to find your niche. And then, what you have to realize is that you'll spend the rest of your life trying to escape that niche. <laughs> and so, what's your niche? Niche. Oh, you're gone. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, your microphone is off now, Stefan. Sorry. Sorry. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what happened. I didn't touch anything. Um, so basically, the um, yeah. So my niche was uh, being not quite French because I didn't really have a French accent, but being foreign um, yeah. and being different. So I was basically on all the castings. I was the wild card. And, uh, and I continued my acting, my sort of um, cinema uh, acting career at the same time as my voice career. And I was really, really lucky to be able to work with people like, like Steven Spielberg, like uh, Kosminski, like, you know, really big names of people who were absolutely a delight to work with. Mm -hmm. But in between those big jobs, I didn't have to wait in a restaurant because I had voice yeah, um, yeah. and uh and that basically kept me going it's uh it was a godsend for me because i never really had to have those jobs that most actors have to have in order to sustain themselves in the period when it's too quiet yeah, um, yeah. so yeah i was very lucky and when you so so you started when you was uh, were really young and um uh, what did you do to learn voice acting? What did I do to learn voice acting? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think if you've trained as an actor, if you've trained as an actor, voice acting were, is no different. Voice acting is, in my opinion, a misnomer in the sense that acting is acting. Mm -hmm. Whatever whatever format you act for, let's say, for example, this baby here, this is Action Man, and if I press this little button, this is acting. This is my voice on a toy. This is acting. Um, there's no such thing as a small actor, uh, as a small part. There's only small actors. There's no such thing as a hierarchy of... Well, first you're a, a cinema actor and then you're a TV actor and then you're a stage actor or, or, or the other way around. For me, acting is acting. And I spent my entire life fighting the snobbery of certain people who think that, oh, just because I do stage, darling, that means I'm much better than you. 
No, it does not. It does not. It just means that you do far less characters than I get to do. I, on average, I mean, I went into acting because I like to be different people. On average, in a week, I will be at least 10 different characters. A stage actor will be, on average, for about three months, the same character. A film actor or a TV series actor will be, on average, for about five years, the same character. Who's winning? Voice actors. Voice actors. Are fun. Voice, actors voice actors. We don't have to worry because we've got a spot on our forehead. We don't have to worry because we do not look like the character. And the organ that we have, and that's, it's a very important thing, is look after your voice. Most people, most voice actors do not look after their tool enough. Do um, voiceover warming. Um, make sure that you steam your voice. Make sure that you do voice exercises before you do any kind of job. Um, look after your tool because your tool is what allows you to uh, to live. But but we we are in such a fortunate ex experience. I can be in my underpants in my booth doing something very serious for the Vatican, and no one will be the wiser. And then when I leave my booth, that's it. Whereas when you when you're a, a film or cinema actor. Um, I was in, 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 the, in one of the last James Bonds. I have about five seconds on screen. Guess how long I was there for? Just waiting. One day? One day a week. A whole a week. week of waiting <laughs> and doing nothing. Okay. Voice actor. Oh, okay. um, Stefan, uh, just, just a question. A question. Um, um, are you sorry? Are you let, oh, let no. me, okay. Yeah, let me, let me do something because you, the sound is coming out very, very badly. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, we just wait for one half a minute. Seconds. Yes? Okay. So we think uh, my voice is, is uh, here twice because the speakers are on. I hope that's the solution. Be, yeah, yeah, it should be done now. Yeah, I'm ah, think so too. Okay, okay, great. So, if you have any questions, just ask them via the question and answer within Zoom or or ask them via the stream within Facebook. And uh, let's start answering some questions, Stefan. Uh, this one is from uh, Joseph Blumen. He's from Holland. Hi, Stefan. As a casting director, how do you know that you found the perfect person for the character you have in mind? Uh, good question. I don't. I don't. I take a gamble every time. And I take a gamble on the person whom I think has shown me the greatest commitment to the character. Yeah. Um, someone who is in touch with their inner child. Someone who obviously loves what they're doing. And, and I can hear that enthusiasm. And if, even if I don't have a, a, a character to cast for them at the moment, mm -hmm. if that enthusiasm is there in the audition, I will put them in a folder and think, oh, I want to work with him because he's completely mad. Yeah. Sometimes you, you will hear voices where you think, oh, this is, this is quite interesting, but uh, the, uh, the person that doesn't have the, the experience you need. What do you do then? Well, it depends. If they're really close to what I'm really looking for and or what I know that, I mean, because as a casting director, you're not the final say either. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're providing things for a client eventually. Um, so what I would say is I would perhaps try to have a chat with the actor first and um, get, a, get him in to do a test and see how he reacts to um, direction because the ability to follow direction is 90% of the job um, if you cannot follow directions or if you've only got one character in your head and, and it's completely fixed mm -hmm. then I, I, I won't be able to direct you or also be very weary about what we call grooving grooving is when you work the character so much that you've only got one character left 
And if the, if the director says, oh no, I'd like somebody with a different accent and can you make him younger? But you've grooved it so much that basically you always come back to that, that is a danger. So don't overwork a character during the audition process. So, so, so you, mean, you mean if you rehearse it too much, then you yes. sew into it and then there is no shifts Exactly. And also because you might, you might be going in completely the wrong direction. Yeah. I mean, creating an audition is a bit like painting by number. You know, when, those, when you've got a lot of numbers on a piece of paper and when you go from one to two to three to four to five to six, eventually it creates a picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a game that children have. Um, basically, a casting sheet on a side is several numbers, right? They don't give you all the numbers. So what you have to do is to come up with the missing numbers. And as long as the, the numbers that you put in are not in contradiction with the numbers that are already on your sheet, you're fine. But don't groove it, i.e. don't make it so that you can't get out of that character. Because yeah. if I work my character like this, for example, I'm thinking he is very overexcited and he's completely like this. And he's, but then the, the director says, yeah, but um, yes, he is excited, but he is very slow to speak. Yes. And I've, I've worked him like this so much that it's going to be very difficult to back from that. Okay. So don't overwork a character. And what if you think if the director says, okay, I need it a bit more like la 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 la. And you think, okay, I think I know what you mean, but I have to rethink or something like that. How, how long do you need for that? If you... Oh, five seconds. Five seconds, yes, yes. Yeah, you need to be able to shift very quickly. Yeah. And, and, but no director will uh, give you a hard time if you don't get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. As long as if he says, oh, okay, let's say for example, I'm working, yeah, sounds like Logan, so what? And before you ask, I haven't had shit to do with him in years. If I, if I yeah, that's what I've given to my director, but he says, no, 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 she's more thoughtful than that. So, okay, more thoughtful. Yeah, sounds like Logan, so what? And before you ask, I haven't had shit to do with him in years. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but I want him to be slightly more aggressive towards the end. So, yeah, sounds like Logan. So what? And before you ask, I haven't had shit to do with him in years. So, basically, you need to be able to, at the push of a button, to change your performance. Because yeah. that's what the director wants you to be able to. We want to work. Let's look. Uh, do you know the word for Play-Doh? You know, um, it's not native. <laughs> okay, play doh so, is a is a thing we give to children, which is like um, it's like oh, a play doh. Play -Doh. It's a yes, yes. Well, it's it's you you can mold it into different shapes, right? Now, play doh can harden in time. Mm -hmm. What you don't want is to be a hard play doh. What you want to be is soft play doh as possible, so the director can go. And twist you in all and different ways, and you need to enjoy that process. Yeah, and some people, to... some people who uh, uh, um, are a bit of the negative side, who would say um, a, di a director wants that. He yes. doesn't want to be a hundred percent ready. What do you no, think? About that? No, I think a director really wants you to be flexible, yeah. to be able to follow direction. Otherwise, what's the point of a director? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and 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 we're there for a reason. We're there to sort of shape you. Also, because the director, even though you may think, okay, my my voice was perfect for this character, yeah, but you sound exactly like another character. Yeah. So I need, as a director, to have the whole game, the whole animation in my head, and I cannot have two people who sound the same. So. If someone has already made the choice to sound Scottish, I can't have yeah. you being Scottish, even though you like being Scottish. Yeah. I have to have you American Standard or something like that. Yeah. If I, if I look with my daughter to Nickelodeon, um, m many times I see the character who's crazy. And um, um, sometimes I think, 
Hmm. If I listen to all those crazy people on Nickelodeon, there aren't really much flavors in being crazy. How do you handle that? How do you uh, so so so? How do you keep some more originality in it? Um, I try to find in any crazy character. If it's crazy, if, if you try to play a crazy character just for the sake of being crazy, mm -hmm. it will be annoying. But if you work the character in terms of how can I relate to that character? Let's say, for example, I'm a mad maniac and I'm going like this all over the world and I, I want to take over Gente. You know why? Because I deserve to take over the world. I'm going from a place of pain, which is a real place of pain, yeah. which is a place. Um, so if you try to find that bit in your character that you can resonate with um, and bring him from a place of truth, then your character will work. I, I've just done a, a, a character who is the head for a, for a big video game called um, uh, Plague Tale. And I play the ultimate villain. The ultimate villain, the ultimate boss is the last boss of a video game. So that's the last one you're gonna be fighting against. And he is an old man who is the head of the Inquisition. So he likes to make people suffer. But why does he like to make people suffer? Because in the next world, they will be saved, Gente. They will. And because of that, all the pain that they have to go through is worth it. He's also possessed by an entity who speaks like this. So he's from time to time here and then sometimes goes like this. <laughs> and then comes back out like this. And uh, it was a joy to play. Anyway. You're frightening me. You're frightening me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I've got, I think I've got about I think I've became a voice actor and, a, and an actor in general because I didn't really like me. And I think that's the, that's the place where a lot of actors, good actors in my opinion, come from. It's they've learned to be other people because the me that they were was a, not quite satisfactory to them or to their family. And therefore they've, they've, got used to being other people yeah. um, and if I had any piece of advice to give is to find the time as a voice actor to take two tiny characters like this mm -hmm. and make them speak to each other and do that for about 10 minutes a day taking the character's voice rejoin what we lose when we go through puberty because that what's make what that what makes a good actor it's that you know in french we say le jeu the play and and we need to learn to play again yeah. um and as a as a as an actor that is essential yeah that's really nicely put okay let's do some uh, quick ones so quick question quick answer okay Even, uh, Chet, sorry, I think I don't pronounce your name right. He says, is acting, <laughs> is acting, is lying, and does it <laughs> encourage lying or not? <laughs> is acting lying? No, no, acting is not lying. Acting is, is an emotion that you feel mm -hmm. and that you project, but you have to feel it at the same time, so it cannot be lying. Okay. You know, that, you know that's what Boris Vian, Boris Vian said, this story is true because I wrote it. Yeah. Uh, Yusuf says, uh, what's the best warming technique for acting? The warming, voice warming technique. Voice warming technique. <clears throat> um, any, any voice warming te technique will do, but I think it has to be physical. And it has to um, uh, basically use all the nasals. So ding, 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 ding. Mm -hmm. It has to use uh, opening and relaxing the jaw. A lot of people suffer from too much tension in the shoulders, which uh, keeps them from being able to do good characters. Uh, Ruby from Tongere, she's asking, which agency could you recommend to do auditions? 
agencies to recommend? Agencies? Yeah. Um, if you are starting off. Oh. Uh, Ruby isn't starting, but, 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 but if you want to go... What I would, what I would, what I, I, uh, what I would do is find out, rather than an agency, an agency will only answer a casting call. So I would try to find out, first of all, I would join the voice hyphen over training uh, because a lot of casting directors are on there. Um, I would watch um, animations and games and I would get the names of the casting directors and of the directors. More often than not, it's the, the casting directors and the directors are one and the same person. They're tasked by a client to find um, a yeah. casting for this they will give three choices for each character and so rather than an agency i would go for a casting director and, an, okay. and a director and was what was the name of the, the, the internet site you just mentioned it's it's called it's a facebook page facebook called page, okay. voice hyphen yeah. training.com voice over training um voice over training on facebook uh, uh or find me on Facebook, Stefan Kornikard, befriend me and say, Stefan, I want to join your group. Yeah. I've got about a thousand people and we do regular workshops on character development and, uh, and it's fun. Great. Uh, Irada Delsing says, you're an inspiration, Stefan. How do you keep all languages at a good level? I go to sleep with uh, various books. I'm a big Harry Potter fan and I've read Harry Potter in... German, Spanish, Italian, French, English. The idea basically is I immerse myself in a story that I know and I love, but at the same time, I get to practice my languages. I've just done a, well, uh, through, <laughs> through you guys, I did, uh, I did uh, 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 several commercials in Korean, uh, Japanese, and Mandarin Chinese, which was, uh, yeah. Um, so thank thank you for that, Jen. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, if, uh, let's see. Uh, Donald Walton says hi, Stefan. Uh, what's your approaching to dubbing? Uh, how do you do a performance when the character is already built for you? Ah, ah, that's good. But you know, Jean-Paul Sartre said that your freedom is determined by your limits. If there were no limits, we would have no freedom. So it's basically one more technicality to, and it, uh, to, uh, to, to get in your head. I teach lip sync. Uh, I teach it in, in London and I teach it in the States. And basically what you have to look at is lip sync is acting in reverse. The choices have already been made. What you need to do is to live through that trajectory of emotion that the character already has mm -hmm. and make sure obviously that you follow the rhythm, you follow the opening of the mouth, the breast. 90% um, of acting for lip sync is to be able to match the breath of the character. Because if you can do that and the script has been well written, then mm -hmm. you're cooking with butter, as they say in Normandy. So, so you are matching the, the breath because? Because the character that you're dubbing yeah. has breathed. Yeah. And if you find the breath of that character, yeah. it will give you his emotional trajectory. And you cannot go wrong. If you go oh, at the same time that he goes, oh, then yeah. you will have the same amount of yeah. oxygen in your lungs. Understandable, so yeah you will be able to have the same level of projections. If, for example, and that's um, one of my favorite things to dub, are uh, telenovelas yeah. from South America, where everything is like this. And, and you know, there's so much passion and so much. And if you can match the breath of those characters, then you're cooking. Um, I'm giving a free intro to lip sync dubbing on the voice over training website uh, so if you want to join that um, it's uh, we use a system called the bond ritmo which is going to take over the world in the next three years it's a brand new system that has been used in france a lot but yeah. is not very common in the rest of the world yet uh, you mean that piece of software which they are using 
in front, which 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 makes it much more easy to to uh, how would you say it? Yeah. Well, to, to lip sync, because yeah. basically what the process, and I'm not going to say too, too much about it because obviously there's more questions, but uh, the band ritmo, basically at the bottom of the screen, you've mm -hmm. got the script that scrolls yeah. and it passes a cursor. When it passes a cursor is the time when your character will open the mouth on each syllable yeah. of yeah. the word. And it's been translated so that the consonants will match in the source language and the destination languages. All the breaths will be written in yeah. with a, a, a symbol, like for example, HHH with a bar going up, yeah. it, it means that it's a breath, open mouth going, <gasps> but if it's uh, two yeah. bars, then it's a longer breath. So it's, 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 yeah. it's like reading music. Mary but Johnson, they, is, she's yeah. asking, uh, uh, how do you do, 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 Dubbing from your own studio, so from your voice booth. How do I do dubbing from there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got two screens. I wish I could show you, but I've got two screens. Um, I basically, usually, I am sent the MP4. I import the MP4 in either Logic Pro or Reaper. Yeah. I've got my, uh, on my right, a big TV screen on which I will put the video with the band ritmo underneath. On my left, I've got the, um, my um, uh, sound system like Reaper or Voice Pro or whatever. And basically, it's a question of uh, following the band ritmo and doing it. I've just done, because of um, in isolation and COVID-19, uh, most of my work in dubbing has been done from home. Yeah. Um, and I've, I think I've done about, um, I don't know, I must have done about 20 feature films uh, yeah. in the last three months. Great. I'm going, going back to do another one uh, Thursday. Thursday. But this time I'm going into a studio, which I prefer, because it, it means I don't have to worry about stopping, starting. I, I, I'm not wear, forced to wear two hats at once. I can yeah. really concentrate on the... On the acting i understand uh, yeah um i think uh here's a question uh which many viewers will have it's from adriana callas she said um she says uh, how how do i make the transition from just normal voiceovers to animation okay um training coaching before um and and and, and that comes from a place of knowledge Mm -hmm. I, if as a casting director and as a director, I get approached by someone who is not quite ready, yeah. my tendency is to put them in a box, which is the no-no box. And once you get into that no-no box, it's very hard to climb out. So I would say, train, get a, a voice coach, get a, not a voice coach, get an acting coach who is a specialist in animation or gaming and ask him for advice. Work with him for a little bit because the last thing you want to do is to burn your bridges. I.e., You don't want to go in there and saying, I'm ready. And then they go, you're not ready because if you fail, so much money is at stake that they will never hire you again. Yeah. So I would say be ready before you go and the best way to be ready is to actually get coaching and yeah. and on the um, voiceover group on facebook there are several acting coaches who are part of that um, you can find more you can work with me you can work with them um, and <coughs> there's a big difference between sorry there's a big difference between the European system and the American system. The American system, basically people go to a voice coach and the voice coach says, you will not submit auditions until I say you're ready. In my opinion, that's a bit much because <laughs> um, it's basically saying, okay, I'll take your money until I decide I don't want to take your money anymore. In Europe, we've got a slightly different system, whereas um, I, we all encourage you to work with different people. Work a little bit with me. Work a little bit with somebody else. Work a little bit with somebody, someone else. Get as much training under your belt as possible, and then you make the leap.
So, for example, you you are a skilled voiceover and you want to go in voice acting. Um, yeah. Let's say uh, you started when you were 20. Uh, you are uh, 32 now. You are starting with a voice actor. Uh, voice acting how long do you think it will need to to be to be there to r really join the, the field of voice acting how long is a piece of string <laughs> yeah um it really depends on you i mean some people are born actors yeah um, and and can they only need technique training? That's all they need because they've got that ability already to jump into somebody else's skin. Some people will never have it. Okay, great, great. Gloria Lewis, she's asking, uh, what was your favorite voice character to do so far? Gavlan, Gavlan. I mean, there, no, there's two. There's two. Um, one of them was a uh, was one which is. It's become cult in France. And even though I recorded it um, over 20 years ago, I'm still getting emails, probably about five or six emails a week about this character because some people, it was so much part of their childhood and it was uh, Liquid Snake in uh, Metal Gear, um, the first iteration. And my character was so tortured and evil and sad and broken um it was a joy to play an absolute joy and I, I once again that's the kind of character that i i reached inside the pain inside of me to get to that character so that's one and the other one is gavlan who was uh, his his name is lonely gavlan and um and he is um a dwarf in a world where his entire tribe his kind has died out and he's the last one okay he, he speaks like this all the time and uh he's he spends most of his time drunk because that's the only way he can face reality uh and that's a quick note when you do a, a side for a car for a director give them something extra at the end of the side i got gavlan because at the end of the sides that i did so all the various um, phrases I started to sing and I sang in the voice of Gavlan yeah. and I sang, uh, I'm only human after all, don't put the blame on me. <laughs> yeah. And that got me the part. Really great. And the French one, uh, how did the French one sound? You just remember? Uh, oh, the, the, um, tu as détruit mon rêve de grandeur. Tu as, <laughs> Sorry, this is actually a, a line when he confronts his twin brother um, who is tried to kill and, and the brother basically thwarted his attempt and, and, and he's so full of rage. He thought he was the chosen child, but he yeah. finds out that in fact he was uh, flawed from the start. All right, um, just some last questions. Uh, oh, I can I can keep going as long as yeah, you want. Yeah. I love I, I, I know love this. and I love it and I love it. Yeah, uh, Howard Owens. He says, uh, "Can we hear something on the matter of becoming self-conscious in the wrong way?" What do you mean on the wrong way? Um, I think he means uh, that's. Uh, I think it's something, something like how do you say that in English? Uh, um, um, uh, uh, sometimes you are behind the mic, looking for the right voice, and then uh, uh, you, you think uh, 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 you okay. think too much. Yeah. Well, I would say lose yourself in your character. That's where your character helps you. If you're feeling self-conscious, is because you still have a connect to yourself. I've got an exercise which I call riding the tiger. Riding the tiger is basically making the decisions that your character will make, but you are still in charge. Basically, when you act, you've got two streams of consciousness that are working side by side. One of them is the construct of your theater, of your, of your character. That is to say, his choices, his anger, his way of thinking. 
And then on top of that, you've got your own, which is basically holding the reins of that character. If you're feeling self-conscious, it's because you are too much in yourself and not enough in the character. So delve into the character, forget yourself. Um, and, and there's an exercise that I do in my training, which is called the he, she, me. And the he, she, me is basically the first step towards becoming somebody else is to leave your own body. So the he, she, me involves talking about yourself in the third person. Yeah. And during that exercise, I sit you down and I force you to speak about yourself in the third person for quite a long time. And, it, and you're not allowed to leave silences. So eventually, you will talk about things you don't want to talk about. But because you're talking about yourself in the third person, it's a safe place. And you can act, and more, more often than not, when you do the he, she, me exercise, people end up in tears. Um, but it is important to be able to accept that the tools of the actors are in feelings. So if you shy away from pain, if you shy away from sadness, if you shy away from grief, then you're shying away from what makes you a good actor. You cannot do that. Becoming an actor will change you. You will never be the same again because there's always going to be that little piece of you watching you. Really, really good. Nicely put. Okay, last call for questions. If you have any questions, last call. So do them in the question and answer within Zoom or go to a Facebook. Um, so next Wednesday, we have our own Gijs Friesen on sound design. If you are not a sound designer yourself and you're thinking, hmm, I want to know some more about, uh, 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 um, uh, for example, uh, uh, problems like uh, um, if I'm working with a voiceover and music, then, then, then if I want to hear the voiceover properly, then I have to uh, fade the, the music much too low. What to do? Gijs is going to tell you how to do it. It's a really simple trick. For example, that. And then uh, next Friday, also, that's a good one. That's... Um, that's um, uh, uh, the, the, the Nano Nangle, sorry, uh, she's going to talk about audiobooks, how to voice over audiobooks. That's also acting, but then in another way. Nano and is amazing. I, she, she was in some of my workshops and she's a very good friend of mine. Don't miss that one. She is brilliant. Yeah. And next Monday, um, if you are a non native like me and sometimes you uh, have to speak English professionally, well, I have to say you will never hear me do an English voice over because then I think I think that's not professional for me uh, but 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 if you have to do things like this go listen next Monday to Buffy Duberman she is totally awesome she's from the United States so I have to say awesome with it uh, and she's going to do how to rock your English it's really worth your time go to uh, voicebooking.com slash en slash webinar uh, okay, there are some extra questions, Stefan. Okay. Hilar Uribe, hope I say it right, I don't think so. Uh, uh, he says, another must-have books aside from actioning and actions of a voiceover. Do you have some other books to mention? Uh, books, uh, yes, I would. Uh, well, An Actor Prepares mm -hmm. by uh, Stanislavski. Um, I would also try to get some works by Grotowski. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also try to get some books by Meisner. Uh, basically, all the acting methods and, um, and basically just... And also perhaps books that are dis destined for directors. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, a director's handbook. Because it, it gives you the perspective of the director and what the director is looking for. Great. Jean-Luc Picard, he says, Adjente, he says, uh, would you like to take a course with Stefan? Um, that, that's a good question, Jean-Luc, uh, because um, um, first I think yes, and then I think no. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I will say, why I will say no, Stefan, because I think I'm, I'm a voiceover. And I'm not a voice actor. I'm not an 
an actor. I'm a presenter and I love to present. So in that way, I should say no. And, in the, and there's something else. Um, um, I really think I should focus on where, where I'm really, really, really good at. And that's uh, building voice voice <laughs> booking so i need to reserve time for that but on the other hand yo you are so amazingly inspiring stefan so 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 maybe i changed my mind um adriana Gallis says uh, what is the best home studio vo mike oh that, that's almost every webinar we do about voiceover what's according to you the best vo mike for me uh, i i basically i've got a I've got a very deep voice. Well, I can go deep, let's put it this way. And yep. I find that uh, my Rode NT1A is, um, is, I love him. Uh, it's warm, it's lovely, it yep. doesn't let me down. Great, great. Pilar Irube says, I can find the email to sign up for more webinars. Uh, that's voicebooking.com slash en slash webinar. And there you will find it. I think then we are... There, I think. Yes, Stefan, thank you very much. It was great and inspiring. And uh, I think we have to do this another time again. With pleasure. With pleasure. I, I love my craft. I love talking about it. I love, and I love making people better at what they do. And to answer your question, I think that um, acting skills can only make you a better voice actor or a better voiceover. Mm -hmm. It will not detract from it, yeah. but it will give you extra strengths. Um, so yeah. That's a nicely put. If people want to uh, book you for a voice coaching session, where can they go to? Uh, best is to find me on Facebook, Stefan Cornicard at Hotmail, well, or, or contact me by email, Stefan underscore Cornicard at Hotmail.com. Or otherwise on Facebook, just befriend me on Facebook. I do a lot because I'm over 50. And as an over 50, we do most of our work on Facebook. Um, I, I haven't caught up to Twitter. I think there's far too much shite on Twitter. Excuse my French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I yeah, just find me on Facebook. I'm there. Okay. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you so much, Gente. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.